If you could tell us how long you've lived in Keene and what you like most about living here. I've lived here for, I think, 39 years, longest place I've ever lived. And uh, we moved here intentionally. We're not here by accident. Uh, we wanted to live where there was a college nearby, and we lived just across Main Street. I like Keene. It's, it's got a lot of the uh, kind of small town feel to it, but we've got a lot of the conveniences of a, you know, a bigger city. We've got great shops and restaurants, and our, you know, downtown is pretty much the pic picturesque <laughs> New England, you know, with a church steeple. and. We chose where we were because we like the walkability, its proximity to everything. Um, we have two children that attended Keene State. Um, it allowed them to walk. Uh, our daughter had a horse at the time that lived at the top of the hill and it was a walkable thing and walkable for work. I'm a lifelong resident of Keene, um, 42, almost 43 years. Uh, it started over in West Keene, uh, but I've been on the east side of Keene for about 25 years or so, since graduating high school anyway. So the best thing I like, I always found Keene a little bit on the boring side growing up here, thinking that there was never anything to do, but as far as a parent's perspective, I, it's great for raising kids. I mean, there's no real crime rate to be concerned with. Uh, so it's a nice, safe, quiet area, elementary school right across, or right near the street where we live. So it's nice and easy to, to get the kids there. So it's great from that aspect. How has your neighborhood changed in the time that you've lived here? It seems to kind of transform to more like student housing. When I first got there, there was a fairly good mix of, you know, residential families and, and students. And um, mm -hmm. over the years, you can just see it kind of gradually got gobbled up by, you know, the, the people that are investing in college housing and whatnot. Um, so it's kind of transferred over to mainly student housing, which I guess in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing, but. Mm -hmm. um, I guess along with that has come a little bit of a lack of pride in, in property, you know, um, the way the properties look and the upkeep and whatnot um, on both the parts of landlords and tenants. We started acquiring college neighbors at that time. We've had very good college neighbors and very bad college neighbors. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it's, it's been a real mix, but less residential than it was in the past. My neighborhood's changed drastically. Um, we've gone from a primary uh, residential neighborhood uh, being independent families living there um, to I think now out of 15 houses, there's only three or four that aren't student housing at this point. So it's been a drastic change. It's really quiet in the summer, which is nice. <laughs> but things, you know, things kind of perk up uh, during school season. And the time that we've lived here, it has gone from up mostly residential, uh, family, um, working class people, um, elderly that were in their homes and had raised their families in these homes too, to a predominantly, there's a lot of college houses now. So it has slowly just moved in that direction. It's changed that way. Please share a positive interaction or situation that you've had with a Keene State student in an off-campus setting. I've had a lot of positive interactions with Keene State students. Uh, I've had many of them as interns, you know, working with the work I've done. Uh, worked with them in various projects for committees and volunteer work that I've done. And the work from the Keene State students I've worked with has been excellent. I, some of it of graduate student quality. So Keene State has some really good students. I actually own a two-family. Um... I live in it and rent out the other section, so I've actually mm -hmm. rented to a, lots of college, Keene State college students over the years, and they've been great. Mm -hmm. um, they've been good, respectful, and uh, they ran on time, hardworking. A lot of them work and you know go to school at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. There's kind of one little funny story. I noticed yeah. on a street sign next to me, a uh, plaque went up, and at first I panicked and thought a frat house was <laughs> moving in next to me, but in actuality it was uh, a sign that um, students had kind of adopted that street in that area, so it was kind of exciting to see them take some ownership. And I've actually seen them out picking up um, pumpkin festival. I know I've seen students with a trailing behind a pickup truck picking up stuff mm -hmm. behind it. Um, so that's kind of nice. Um, and in general, just meeting students downtown or whatnot, they're friendly and respectful. And um. we've had some very nice neighbors next door to us. Uh, one young lady I happen to know, Allie. Who's living there right now in the house next to us and I've enjoyed knowing her just as a neighbor. Just the day-to-day -day interaction of saying hello, greeting, 
Um, I've asked Allie to help out watching animals for us when we've gone away. So that's been very nice to have that availability of somebody that we can, you know, ask right next door. I do try to um, interact with students knowing that if their car is parked uh, in a way that the city finds it illegal and I know that they're going to end up getting a ticket, I'll try to make sure to, to point stuff like that out to them, you know, give them a chance to move their cars before they do get ticketed, things like that. So just try to keep, keep the peace a little bit from that regard. What has been the biggest challenge of living among college students? Um, probably just in general would be um, not being considerate of the neighbors around them, even not just maybe families or other people, but even other students that live in our neighborhood that are busy trying to study or, you know, just live their lives too without too much, you know, upheaval. Um, I'd say probably noise is a big concern. Um, just disregard for the homes that they're in too also is something else that we've seen. It's like not a sense of pride and that they have. I think the biggest challenge for me is just the overall, the overall noise factor. Um, I, live, I live in an area of town that's kind of a conduit between one bar and all the other bars. Mm -hmm. So I've got constant foot traffic from eight o'clock until three o'clock in the morning almost every single night and it gets worse on the weekends so the challenge is you know getting my kids to bed keeping my kids asleep with all this noise from from you know younger people walking around town you know I'm, I'm not gonna say they're all Keene State College kids because they're probably not but um, no it's just that that general noise factor what I would consider a little bit of uh, um, courtesy issues that people just don't seem to pay attention to. I mean, there's more to the world than your little three-foot bubble. Just a general lack of respect for, for other people in the neighborhood. Um, all hours of the night, just yelling and screaming, um, cursing, general loiter, loitering around of, you know people's property, and just a total disregard for the fact that these are people that may be working six, seven days a week at you know different hours. and. Uh, um, I've definitely lost some sleep <laughs> over those 25 years um, due to that kind of thing. I've had um, trash in my yard. Um, I've had vandalism. And you might ask, how do I trace that back to specific, mm -hmm. specifically students? But it generally correlates with large parties. The bigger the parties get and the more drinking and the more chaos that's going on, that's when it, it just seems to escalate. Um, public urination, it's just gotten crazy over the last few years. We had an issue next door when students used to live next door to us that the landlord was not treating them fairly. <clears throat> and I was talking to him out, out in the front yard one day and I said, uh, you know, you, you shouldn't let your landlord treat you like this. And they said, well, what should we do? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, talk to your landlord. And by, uh, they said, well, our parents should probably talk with our landlord. And I said, you know, this is something you need to learn as part of your college experience, how to grow up how to take care of yourself and uh, make sure that your rights are protected too. And um, you know, so they, they tried to deal with the landlord and you know, we were trying to help on, on our side, but um, again, they were being taken advantage of and uh, it took them a while to realize that, but they wanted to work and they were happy to have us try and offer to help. What one thing would you like student tenants to keep in mind as they move into your shared neighborhood? That they are moving into a neighborhood. Um, and they are living alongside of other people and that they need to think of this just as if it's it's their home. It is their home while they're there. Think about where they lived and where they came from and how their family might feel if their neighborhood was changed in this way or I don't know if you want to say invaded sounds like the wrong word, but sometimes it feels like an invasion. You know. So I think just remembering that, you know, you are living around other people and you're not isolated from them and you're interacting with them and so you have to think about those things as you move out into the world as a person. Um, maybe hold one another accountable. Um, you know, I think the vast majority of students are, are good people, they're hardworking, um, respectful. Um, so when and if you're in a situation where you're with friends or whoever that are doing these kind of things, maybe maybe exert a little bit of positive peer pressure to, to uh, you know, think twice about their actions. Just keep in mind that there are other people other than students living around you. 
Um, I'm all for loud music. Uh, big punk rock fan. Um, so I'm, I'm all for making the windows rattle, but not after 10 o'clock at night. We do have city ordinances and, and that stuff should be, that stuff should be respected. Uh, I try to do that same respects, uh, you know, anything during, during the day, I'm pretty much game for, uh, because, you know, I'm not out to be a joy kill, but you know, it's time to kind of buckle down and, you know, just consider other people around you. Well, there are neighbors and, um, it's a residential neighborhood. So they should act as though they were living wherever they came from, unless they're not in a residential neighborhood. But you know, with, with neighbors who um, primarily own their own homes, but care about their homes and the surroundings. And um, it's unfortunate with Keene State, many students think uh, Thursday night is Friday night. So they have two Fridays, one Saturday and one Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think it's important for them to realize that they're, they're here at Keene State to get a very good education. But there's also a responsibility that goes with it. Um, parting is okay. And uh, the only time we've had trouble with students in their neighborhood is not one-on-one -on -one with students or even one-on-two, -on -two, but um, when alcohol comes out and they invite friends, uh, <clears throat> especially from out of town, uh, sometimes you know, they can lose control pretty quickly. It's okay to party. You just have to party responsibly.